Hi, I'm Chloe with Brit & Co. And first off, congratulations on such a wonderful film. It's been a long time coming and it's so exciting that it is finally here. And one of my favorite things about the movie, one of my favorite themes, is how no matter how old you are, what time period it is, there are so many experiences that unite women. And I would love to hear what it was like working on this particular story with so many different kinds of women. It was amazing, honestly, and I think it really shows that no matter, yeah, no matter what age you are, we all really are going through the same thing. We're all figuring ourselves out, no matter if you're 11 or if you're 80 or anywhere in between. You have, it's, it's a really intergenerational story of, you know, people can relate to Margaret or to Barb or to Sylvia, but we all still, we need to, it's really a supportive thing, and I think during the movie we really explore, <laughs> explore that, I'm rambling, um, we really explore that, how, you know, Barb's story and Margaret's story, we, we kind of come together in the end, and it proves that that even though we are going through different things and diff at different times in our lives, we can still relate to each other and relate to our own experiences and help each other out, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well put. Yeah. Yes, are there any particular moments from the movie that you relate to? Because I know that I have had plenty of awkward conversations with my crushes. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I, I there are so many parts of the movie that I relate to um, honestly I was going through the exact same stuff that Margaret was at the exact same time that she was and I yeah I relate to her and all of her experiences so much and I think that her experiences are kind of universal in the sense that we all go through that awkward teenage phase. We all we all get to have awkward conversations with crushes. We all have that awkward first kiss. We all have the, you know, awkward bra buying experience where they <laughs> make you feel really bad about your own boobs, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why I think Margaret is such an incredible story. It's because it's so relatable and the it just really lets people that know that they're not alone. That that you you have all these experiences but there there's nothing there's nothing not normal about it mm -hmm. and it's something that we really need to talk about mm. Rachel did the movie make you think about any of your experiences from middle school with all of the wisdom that you've gained and um and kind of especially working with Abby and working with all of the other actresses Yeah it definitely took me back um when I read the book for the first time I you know I was I was combing it for nuggets about Barb which there were many but um, I also just felt transported back to my youth mm -hmm. I mean I was right there um, same thing the hair drama and the bra drama and the boy drama and you know it's like so as you said so much drama um, yeah and you you do you do tend to forget and it's a great reminder I think especially for a parent how intense it is you know and and fun and funny um but like a really intense time and that kids need to be given a little grace around that yes, and a lot we do. right we do yeah and a lot of support <laughs> um and room for conversation you know mm -hmm. i mean you're not of course going to want to talk about all of it but just to know <laughs> you can to know mm -hmm. that someone will see you and wants to hear what you're going through, that it's just as legitimate as an adult's experience as well. And I think mm. Judy gave people that. And Kelly, by extension, um, is doing it again and doing it for women of all generations that, you know, Kathy Bates playing a, a grandmother who's, who am I? What is my identity if my children don't live mm. down the street? Um, am I just gonna curl up and die or? <laughs> You know, do I dye my hair red and get a boyfriend? It's like, <laughs> go yeah. to Palm Beach. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then for Barb, too. You know, so many women out there grappling with working and being um, creatively fulfilled as well, uh, and, and then being present at home with their families. And, you know, can you do it all, or can you do it all some of the, you know, 
do you have to, mm -hmm. how do you section it all out and, and make sure you stay sane? Um, yeah, and, and be able to show up for your kids more because you showed up for yourself. Yeah. Yes, there are so many great things that you just touched on there about relationships and about balancing all these different areas of life. What do you hope viewers leave the theater with, especially young women when they come and see the movie? If you could describe one feeling that you hope they leave with. I hope that people... For both of you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I hope that people leave the movie um, just feeling like they can talk about this stuff and feeling like they're not alone. Um, I think that certainly in this time that we're living in, it's super important that we have these conversations as uncomfortable as they might be. And as a teenager, you will be dying mm -hmm. when your parent is discussing all this stuff. It's awkward, I know, but it's so crucial that we talk mm -hmm. about this stuff because as, as uncomfortable as, as it is, you, you are going to go through it, and it's important to know actual good facts as well as, as, well as just having the support uh, that you will need. Yeah, absolutely. Rachel, what do you hope people leave the theater feeling? Um, I hope people feel good. I hope they feel um, seen. You know, I hope they mm. they feel like um, they had a shared experience that brought them closer together. Um, and I, I hope they have fun with it too. I think, you know, puberty is great fodder for um, a lot of good <laughs>, laughs. Um, so uh, yeah, but I think it's a really feel good movie and I, and I, and I do, you know, it's not rocket science, but I do hope it inspires conversation. Real, genuine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this book has been so formational for so many different people. What are some other books that had an influence on you when you were both a little bit younger? Ugh, this question always comes back. Um, I honestly loved the Percy Jackson series. I was a huge like fantasy, sci-fi, that kind of mythology stuff when I was younger. And I really related to Annabeth because I was, I was the smart kid who had all this great advice and no one listened to me. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would curl up in the corner and blow through all those books in about a week. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I was a huge reader, I still am, and I, I lived in the library. And I have so many books that I, that I loved, but God, I, I need to make a list of these, honestly, f specifically for this reason. I need to make a list of all the books that influenced me when I was a child. So you're going to do right after this assignment. interview. But yep. it's, it's true, because there's yeah. so many, and then, you, and then later this will be over, and I'll be like, oh! I'll think of the best one. Yes, honestly. of course. Right I know. There's this. too many. There's too many. I mean, I loved the Anne of Green Gables series and Anne yes. of Avonlea. Um, I'm a Canadian yes. girl, so not that you have to be Canadian to love it, but um, <laughs> uh, it's huge in Japan. Oh, really? Anne of Green Gables. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I yeah. So, and yeah, small, funny fact. Um, uh, Anne of Green Gables, and I love Judy Blume's. I, I actually didn't read um, Margaret when I was younger, but I did love her Fudge series. I, I loved a lot of her books um, as a younger, younger kid. Um, but yeah, as a teenager, probably Anne of Green Gables was my uh, soul sister. <laughs> Me too. I love really? Anne of Green Gables so much. So good. I found so. online, I saw a sweatshirt once that said carrots. It was like an orange sweatshirt, and I've not been able to oh find it. I've considered just <laughs> making it for myself. <laughs> Some stencils. That would be amazing. <laughs> Adding it to the Christmas list. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Birthday list. Yeah. So my last question is for Rachel. And I would say that, you, so your character, Barb, and Regina George from Mean Girls and Allie Hamilton from The Notebook are definitely brunch girls. If they all <laughs> got to meet in a parallel universe and had brunch together, what do you think that they would talk about first? <laughs> My God, sorry, it was, it was Barb, Regina George, and Allie Hamilton? Yes, I know. I rephrased it so many times trying to figure out how to make it the most streamlined. <laughs> no, it's I just a, had to get my big question. Yeah, my decades straight there. Um, wow, they would talk about. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe your character. I haven't even seen half of them. <laughs> 
I love you so much. Um, um, yes, right, you can't help me here. Um, um, they would talk about, oh, I mean, Regina would monopolize the conversation. And so they would all pro they'd probably talk about Regina. Yeah, that's valid. Yeah. A great compliment sesh. Yes, know. yes, Sweet. exactly. Over cheese fries. <laughs> Yes, right. definitely. Yes. Thank you so much for chatting with me and congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much.